So uh, when we see the file of the patient and patient is having low HP, then what are the three important things we have to see first? First, we have to see CBC with indices. So we have to ask for whole indices, not only hemoglobin. Many of times only hemoglobin is done. So that is not sufficient for the evaluation of anemia. We have to get a whole uh, hemogram with all the indices. And second thing is we have to get a retic count done and red cell distribution rate. So most of the time it is comes in a uh, whole hemogram. Retic count we have to ask separately to pathologists. Otherwise RDW and CBC indices that comes automatically in hemogram reports. So what we have to see in indices, so if anime is concerned, as far as concerned, we have to look only for MCV, that is the mean corpuscular volume, and uh, we can divide it, we divide it into three things, uh, one is normal cell load, that is normal MCV value, which one 85 to 90, 95 according to the lab uh, reports, one is macrocytic, more than uh, normal, and third one is microcytic. So second thing, what we have to uh, see is retic count. And third thing, what we have to see is red cell distribution width. So what is retic count? So just in short, I will tell you reticulocytes are the precursor of RBCs and they are in the blood cells. They come from the bone marrow and this reticulocyte count, they mature into the hemoglobin. So normally they are immature RBCs just one step before the maturity, they come into the uh, circulating blood and normal value of retic count is anything between 0.5 to 2. So when retic is less than 0.5, that means our marrow is not working good. And if it is more than 2, that means marrow is working very good. So in spite of high retic count, there is anemia, that means there is destruction. So we have to think for hemolytic anemias. When retic is low, that means our bone marrow is not working. It is maybe because of the nutritional factor or because of the bone marrow. Any bone marrow disorder like aplastic anemia, MDS, a retic will be low or any nutritional deficiency retic will be low. So <clears throat> this is the thing about retic count. So next thing is RDW. So RDW is red cell distribution width. So I will give you an example. If there are 10 persons and if there, we ask them to take, uh, suppose I say 10 children and I, I, I ask them to take uh, the apples, which are a uh, basket full of apples, there are plenty of apples. So what will what will they do? They will put up two apples in every hand. So every children will have same amount of apple. But if there are 10 children and if there are six apples, so one child will get two apples, one child will take one apple or many child will not be able to take any apples. So there will be uh, a variation in the number of apples in every hand. So that is the same concept for red cell distribution width. If your nutrition is good, your vitamins and blood level, this uh, irons are plenty of amount, then all the sizes of the red blood cells will be equal. There is no nutritional deficiency. But if there is nutritional deficiency, some blood cells will get good amount of nutrition. They will, have, they will be of good size. Some will be of low size. Some will be of intermediate size. So this, if we uh, keep all the uh, sizes in the same line and the variation is called as red cell distribution width. So if it is high, it suggests it's a nutritional deficiency. If red cell, red cell distribution width is normal, then we are not dealing with any nutritional deficiency. So briefly, uh, we will divide. If we see the patient of anemia, hemoglobin is low. First, we have to see the indices and we have to differentiate broadly into uh, by reticulocyte count. If retic count is low, we are mostly dealing with some nutritional anemia or some bone marrow problem. If reticulocytes count is high, we are dealing with some hemolytic anemia. And if retic is low, which is most of the time, 90% of the time we are dealing with some nutritional anemia or bone marrow related problem, then we have to divide uh, according to the MCV, whether MCV is low, MCV is normal or MCV is high. So MCV low, microcytic, MCV no normal is normocytic anemia and high MCV is macrocytic anemia. If high retic, we will, uh, it will be a hemolytic anemia that we can discuss in some other lecture. So, uh, common day of most commonly we are, uh, causes low MCV. We see with low MCV. So, and low MCV causes three important causes, which in, in our daily practice, uh, is iron deficiency anemia, thalassemia and anemia of chronic disease. So you see the hemoglobin, hemoglobin is low. You next you see the reticulocyte count, reticulocyte count is low. Then you see the MCV, MCV is also low. Then these three things we have to keep in our mind. Iron deficiency, thalassemia and anemia of chronic disease. 
So now what we have to see? We have to see RBC count. We have to see red cell distribution width and then iron profile. So first we have to rule out between iron deficiency and even thalassemia. So iron deficiency is a deficiency. So the RBC cells will be low. And in thalassemia, it is a hemoglobin problem. It is a uh, chain problem, structural problem. So then in that cases, thalassemia RBC count will be normal. There is no deficiency. RBC RBC cells are forming, but they are dividing because of the immature uh, beta cells. So basic difference between iron deficiency and thalassemia is RBC count will be on the lower side in iron deficiency and RBC count will be higher in the thalassemia. Second, red cell distribution width. So as we have discussed in iron deficiency anemia, red cell distribution will be high. And in thalassemia, red cell distribution width will be no, it will be normal. So <coughs> you have low MCV, high red cell distribution width, and low RBC count. It is iron deficiency anemia. If it is low MCV, normal RDW and normal RBC count, it is thalassemia. Okay. <coughs> if next step is if you are uh, thinking of uh, this iron deficiency anemia, you have ruled out thalassemia, then you have to uh, next thing is you have to go for iron profile. That includes serum iron, TIPC, and ferritin. And on the basis of that, we can also differentiate whether it is iron deficiency or it is anemia of chronic disease, which is our third DD. Uh, <clears throat> in iron deficiency, what will happen? Iron will be low and TIBC will be high. TIBC, we can correlate with the hunger. So if iron is low, so hunger will be high. So TIBC will be high. And ferritin stores, because iron deficiency, ferritin also will be low. Basic difference between iron deficiency and anemia of chronic diseases. In anemia of chronic disease, you have plenty of nutrients, but because of the chronic inflammatory conditions, body is not able to utilize that iron. So in iron deficiency, what will be there? Uh, ferritin will be low, but in anemia of chronic disease, ferritin will be high. So in this way, we can differentiate between three things, iron deficiency, thalassemia, and anemia of chronic disease. If we see red cell distribution width, iron deficiency anemia, it will be increased, thalassemia and anemia of chronic disease it will be normal. RBC count, as we have discussed in iron deficiency anemia, it will be lower side. Iron, it will be lower in uh, iron deficiency and it will be lower in anemia of chronic disease, but ferritin will be higher in anemia of chronic disease and it will be lower in iron deficiency. So, <clears throat> just to summarize, you see the hemoglobin, hemoglobin is low. Second thing, you see the retic count. Retic count is low or retic count is high. If retic count is low, we are dealing with some nutritional deficiency or bone marrow problem. If retic count is high, we are dealing with hemolytic anemia. If hemolytic anemia we are suspecting, we cannot move further without a peripheral smear. Then we have to involve pathologist. And 90% of the time, it is MC, uh, retic count is low. So we are dealing with some nutritional deficiency. You divide according to MCV. If MCV is low, you have to differentiate between iron deficiency thalassemia and anemia of chronic disease. So on the basis of red cell distribution width and on the basis of RBC count, first differentiate whether it is iron deficiency anemia or whether it is a thalassemia. You rule out thalassemia, then you ask for iron profile, serum iron, TABC ferritin and on basis of that you differentiate iron, iron deficiency or anemia of chronic disease. Because what happens many of time you, you get a uh, hemoglobin done, you get a serum iron. Serum iron is low, you are giving iron, but it is an anemia of chronic disease. Serum iron will not, uh, giving injectable iron will not help. So before giving iron, you also ask for ferritin. So without ferritin, serum ferritin levels don't give just serum uh, injectable iron. Second, <laughs> second uh, nutritional deficiency, second is your MCV is high. We have discussed MCV low, now MCV is high. So MCV is high, most of the times we are dealing with four or five things uh, in our clinical practice. One is most common is megaloblastic anemia, then it can be aplastic anemia, MDS, chronic liver disease or leukemia. Uh, so basic difference, megaloblastic is <coughs> your uh, cells, they are devoid of some B12 folic acid, so they are not they are forming, but uh, they are uh, destroying fast because of the structural problems. So, megaloblastic anemia will have associated what they will have, they will have high LDH because cells are forming, but they are getting destroyed. So, LDH is a marker of cellular proliferation and cellular destruction. So, high MCV with LDH is high. So, we are suspecting megaloblastic anemia. Along with that, there will be increased bilirubin because of the cell destruction, there will be hemolysis, slight amount of hemolysis, and your indirect bilirubin will be high. So, first, 
by this you can judge about megaloblastic anemia and on peripheral smear there will be macrocytosis there will be neutrophilic leukos neutrophil side there will be uh, basophilic sibling may be there next is aplastic in aplastic your marrow is not working so in that case ldh will be lower side your marrow is not working cells are not forming so there will not be bilirubin destruction there will be no cellular destruction so bilirubin will be normal third is mds so mds generally occurs in older age most of the times your a patient is more than 50 years mds we are suspecting though we are seeing in younger age also but generally mds occurs in higher age uh, <coughs> then if you are suspecting mds uh, in mds also there is a marrow disorder so there will be no problems with bilirubin there will be no problems with ldh your ldh will be low your uh, bilirubin will be normal and both the conditions will be then mds and aplastic then we have to do a bone marrow we have to uh, look for bone marrow because mds and aplastic both can be diagnosed with bone marrow only third thing is chronic liver disease so chronic liver disease also will have anemia will have, will high mcv but in liver disease there will bilirubin will be direct bilirubin will be high and patient will be having other features of liver disease also like hypoproteinemia or known case of hepatitis or chronic alcoholic disease and third is leukemia so leukemia patient is most of the time is sick having fever bleeding disorder bleeding history like that 